Hey, this is Mike from the Run Testers. In this video, I'm going to be talking about this watch. Uh, this is the Samsung Galaxy Watch 3. Um, so this is Samsung's top-end smartwatch. So in terms of price and kind of feature set, you're looking kind of similar to you know what the Apple Watch is going to kind of offer you. Um, I've only had it for a few days. Um, it's only been out for a few days. Um, I managed to get a run with it. So I wanted to share my kind of initial first run thoughts uh, and there are some features that are kind of aimed at runners as well which is um, quite interesting um, so yeah I'm going to kind of dig into kind of the main things I've noticed um, how it kind of compares to the last Samsung uh, watches and uh, yeah these are my initial first run thoughts on the Samsung Galaxy Watch 3. Okay, so let's start off with design. Um, so the big things are, unlike an Apple Watch, you are getting a traditional kind of round watch. Um, you've got two physical buttons on the side and you've got this rotating bezel, which is kind of being the signature kind of feature for Samsung. So ultimately that kind of lets you navigate um, through the different screens. Um, and it's just a nice kind of feature to have and a different way to kind of interact with the watch itself. Um, that's partnered up with a leather strap. Now, the interesting thing for me is this comes with a leather strap, but there's a bunch of sports features on here. And I think for the price, there should probably be a sport band or a sportier kind of silicone band, something of that nature, included in the box. Now, ultimately, this is not the kind of strap that's ideal um, for going running with. Um, you can change them. They do have these little pins that let you change the straps out. But I think for the money that you're paying, I think it would be nice to have that extra strap in there to kind of make use of those fitness features. Um, in terms of when I went running with it, it wasn't a major issue. I wasn't going out, you know, you know, full, full uh, speed um, on that run. But ultimately, if I was running more regularly with it, I'd want something a bit more suitable. Um, well, you can't knock Samsung for is their displays. Now, for me, it's, it's bright. It's colourful, um, I think visibility, you know, there's no issues there, uh, indoor, outdoor. Um, and yeah, it's a great display to kind of um, to look at your data during your run. Um, in terms of the combination of the screen and the bezel when, it, when you're out running, so you can use that bezel to kind of change through and view your different data fields. Um, I think when you're running a bit quicker, like using the bezel, it's not ideal um, and I still think you know buttons just make more sense you know why reinvent the wheel in terms of what works on running watches and sports watches um, it's, a, it's a nice thing to do but I think if you're running quick and you're kind of flicking through it's easy to kind of rotate that bezel and and go past one of your the screens that you want to look at uh, but yeah minor things um, the main the main thing for me it's a really nice um, looking watch it doesn't feel like uh, it's kind of built for sport, you know, it, it's a kind of more traditional, classic looking kind of watch style. Um, I've got the Samsung Galaxy Watch Active 2, which is kind of the, as it, you know, the clues in the name, it's it's designed more for fitness and it's smaller. Um, I prefer running with this, but not to say that, you know, I didn't have any major issues. Um, like I say, I wish it had a sportier band and um, yeah, the rotating bezel, um, not ideal, I think, when you're going full pelt running, but generally it's quite nice if you're just going out and doing some casual miles and uh, just want to flick through and see what's, uh, how you're getting on in terms of progress. So yeah, that's kind of my take on the kind of main design stuff and kind of, you know, how it kind of uh, responds to kind of going out and running with it. Um, so yeah, let's get into what the running features are. Okay, so let's get into those um, running features. So you're getting built-in GPS, you're getting a heart rate monitor, you're getting all the kind of key sensors that you need to go running with. Um, now, when you get into the kind of main running settings, there's actually a fair amount that you can um, set up. So you can go after a, a specific target, whether that's time, distance, calorie, kind of, you know, burn. Um, you can also customize uh, your data fields now, what's quite nice is that you can um, display up to six data fields, which is more than uh, the previous Galaxy Watch. Um, and the kind of data that you can kind of see, you know, there's a lot there. There's pace, 
duration, distance, heart rate, um, average pace. Um, there's all the kind of key uh, running metrics that you'd hope to see from a running watch. Uh, additional features include high location accuracy, you can have auto pause, you can have auto lap, and you can kind of adjust how that auto lap um, is kind of set up. And you have the screen always on um, option. Now, when you have the screen always on option, it is going to use more battery. Now the big deal here, and the big kind of headline for runners on this watch is the advanced running metrics. Now what Samsung is saying is that it can deliver the kind of insights into running technique and form without the use of a foot pulse sensor, which is where you'd kind of get metrics like ground contact, time, vertical oscillation, um, and other bits of information. Um, and now it's saying it can do that, um, whether it can do that, reliably is another thing um, but it's an interesting feature to have and it rounds off what is a pretty kind of solid um, array of options and features um, for this smartwatch um, so yeah let's get into what it's like to run with uh, and get those initial thoughts on uh, whether it makes a good first impression okay so let's get into that first run so First thing for me and the first slight issue is when you get into that running screen, you immediately get a countdown uh, and then you have the settings options at the bottom. So you're kind of competing to kind of look through your settings if that's, you know, you want to play around and change, you know, what you're doing for your session. Um, it'd be much nicer if you could just kind of open that screen, deal with your settings and then start the run. So I'm not quite sure why Samsung have done it that way. Um, I'm sure it's something that they can kind of change. Um, and when I get out and that, you know, out and running and kind of looking at the data, and um, it's you know, it's generally pretty fine. Um, say you've got up to six data fields now. I kind of went with less. Um, screen's fine in terms of being able to absorb that information, um, and in terms of the accuracy, um, kind of basic core running metrics are kind of generally fine um, for heart rate now. Because of this strap, I could not get the kind of fit that I know that I would need to get a good, um, reliable um, kind of uh, heart rate information from it. Now, for kind of average heart rate, it wasn't spot on to a chest strap, but it was kind of roundabout, you know, good enough for me. But when you got to the max, heart rate was massively high uh, in places, which I put that down less so with the sensor but more in terms of the fit and not being able to really get a tight fit with this um with this strap now onto the advanced running metrics now full disclosure i had my foot pod on um and the foot pod did not pick up my uh my running metrics so i don't have the comparison data but what i can kind of tell you and talk you through is what i saw on the watch and you know what i saw afterwards and how that data looks um, when you need to kind of analyze it. So when you're out running, you can basically flip through to a screen and you get the screen that's basically called a symmetry. Um, and as you're running, it will tell you on your left and your right if it's good or bad, um, and you can quite clearly kind of see that. Um, when you finish your run uh, and you save it and you kind of look through the watch, it will break down all those different advanced running metrics it records and it will give you, um, again, it's kind of good, bad, you know, improve, um, which on the basis doesn't really say much. Now, when you go into the companion app, the Samsung Health app, you get a bit more in terms of that um, information. Now, it's quite a lot of information there. There's a lot of graphs, um, a lot of data, um, but... What's nice is that the different random metrics are explained, what they mean, what uh, what they mean in terms of your form and your technique. Um, I think what it's missing is that kind of uh, insight into what the, those kind of metrics mean for you in terms of your technique and your form. Um, what's quite nice is it does recommend kind of uh, exercises um, tied to that technique and that form and how that can you know help you and it will take you, it will show you how those exercises work and how you can do them and how long you should do them. So it's quite nice. Um, like I say, I can't really vouch for the accuracy just yet, um, just because my footpod didn't work. Um, but I will be going out before I do my full review. I'll get some of that data to kind of compare. 
Um, so generally, I would say core running metrics, pretty reliable. Um, advanced running metrics, can't really say just yet how accurate they are, but in terms of the the way it you know, informs you, how, what they mean, and the amount of data you get in the app, uh, it's actually quite impressive. Um, in terms of battery life, pretty similar in terms of the, you know, what I got from the Galaxy Watch Active 2 and the Galaxy Watch. Um, it's a similar size battery, capacity battery to the Galaxy Watch Active 2, and it's not a, a noticeable drop off. I did like 40 minutes um, running and there wasn't any kind of concerns in terms of the, the drop off. Um, obviously, if you do have that always on display, that is going to impact on battery life. Um, I think it's a feature that I would want to have just to have a kind of normal running watch experience. But there isn't kind of a worrying drop off, and that's the main thing for me, uh, which is, you know, it's a good thing. Um, it's generally running performance, good. Definitely need to spend a bit more time with it, especially for the advanced stuff. Um, but good so far, um, nothing out of the ordinary to report. Um, okay, so initial thoughts, big thing, this strap. I need a spoiler strap because this doesn't really cut it for running and I don't think it's not I don't think it's too much to ask to have that additional strap uh, when you've got so many sports features and running features on here um, in terms of that running experience it was pretty good I you know I like the fact that it's smaller and lighter and it's a little bit closer in terms of the feel of the Galaxy Watch Active 2 um, although this is the bigger size and I think the smaller size option would give you a similar experience um, in terms of that bezel, in terms of that screen, in terms of you know when you're out running, it does a pretty good job. But I think the metrics, the basic data, you know, was fine. Um, I reserve judgment on the advanced running metrics. As I said, you know, I had you know issues in my foot pods, um, but yeah, generally good. Uh, I enjoyed using it. Wish it was a better strap on here. Um, but yeah, so far so good and uh, kind of looking forward to spending a bit more time um, for I give my full review thought. So there you have it, that is my first run thoughts on the Samsung Galaxy Watch 3. As always, uh, like and subscribe if you've got any comments, let me know um, what I'm testing, if there's anything you want me to look out for. Um, and yeah, I'll see you for the uh, next run testers video.